in the annals of Southampton's history, its darkest moment came during a series of devastating air raids, mainly during the autumn winter of 1940. Today, over 80 years on, we are still living with the consequences. Before the Second World War, parts of the town, like the high streets, were considered among the finest in the country. The docks were expanding, the town had major railway and communication links, and there were important factories like Supermarine in Wollston, Pirelli's, and the shipbuilders Thornycroft's. All of these aspects made the town a major target when war was declared in September 1939, and the Nazi German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, targeted Southampton. By mid-July 1939, nearly 10,000 air raid shelters had been issued to local householders. By August, the medieval vaults had been converted into shelters too. Castle Vault could accommodate nearly 200 people. The Undercroft, 120. In total, 100 basement shelters provided accommodation for 10 thousand people. The first air raid took place on the night of the 19th-20th of June 1940 and raids continued throughout the summer. On the 13th of August the cold stool was hit, 2,345 tonnes of butter alighting. 10,000 gallons of water couldn't put the flames out and it burned for days. This led one dock worker to remark to his friend, fancy urn, all this butter and no ruddy bread. Another loss was the Supermarine Spitfire factory, destroyed in September. These early attacks were the precursor to devastating attacks on civilian targets. One of the worst atrocities was on the 6th of November when the art gallery was attacked while the School of Art was hosting a needle and thread lesson, killing over a dozen children and many others elsewhere in the civic centre. There were three particularly devastating nights of bombing raids, the 23rd and 30th of November and the 1st of December 1940. Every night had its uniqueness and terror. Different parts of the town were hit Centuries-old historic landmarks wiped out in the blink of an eye and innocent lives lost. But all these nights followed a similar pattern. All the raids began at about 6 or 6.30 p.m. Flares were dropped first to give the bombers more visibility and then incendiary bombs were the main weapon of choice. Around 120 enemy bombers were in action. 50 tonnes of bombs or more each night fell. A number of remarkable first-hand accounts survive from this time. One local man, Lawrence Bishop, recorded his attempt to cycle home to Shirley from town. An ARP warden motioned me towards the shelter under All Saints Church on the corner of East Street. The raid was now at its most terrifying height and I was slightly dazed as I entered the shelter. But there, a pleasant surprise awaited me. A smiling, grey-haired lady greeted me with, Come on in, Sonny. Have a seat over here. Would you like a nice cup of tea? During this time, a number of the public shelters including 94 High Street and a trench shelter in Hoglands Park, received hits or damage resulting in large numbers of fatalities. As much as anything, this was terrifying to those who needed to use them. Comparisons were made to the London Underground, which was seen as far safer in comparison to Southampton's air raid provision. A government report written by Sir John Hodson, 
and declassified in 1973 raised a number of concerns about the preparedness of the town for the air raid attacks. The report suggests as many as 2,000 people fled the town and a number of people slept in woodland in the aftermath. Other issues that arose included the fire service only having one third of its usual strength, an acute shortage of labour so that men had to be rationed for priority work, difficulties in communication due to broken telephone wires. The limited access to water for fighting fires was also noted. 75 miles of hoses were needed to relay water from the common or docks to combat fires. The head figures came in for the most direct attack in the report. The mayor is a poor creature and as far as could be made out disappeared about three o'clock every afternoon in order to get home in safety. The numbers speak for themselves. According to official figures, the totals for 1940 were that 481 people had died, 672 were wounded, 575 buildings had been destroyed and nearly 1500 were demolished as a result. Despite the destruction to the town, Southampton played a vital role in the Second World War after the Blitz, including thousands of ships that came into the docks, its role in D-Day and in repatriating thousands of Far East prisoners of war in 1945. Many of the town's distinctive buildings had been destroyed or damaged beyond repair. Holyrood Church, the Audit House, the birthplace of Isaac Watts. After the war ended, new buildings were constructed. These are physical reminders of the terrors of war and also the spirit of endurance forged in Southampton during wartime.